This prison is unique. Convicts are required to wear iron shoes. The first thing upon incarceration is to wear these 88-pound iron shoes. With a clack, the shoes lock in a green light signals. Every step a prisoner takes requires a great deal of effort. The guard warns him. Don't even think about escaping. The computer will lock your shoes. Then increase the magnetism. When the red light signals, the shoes generate an immense pull to the floor. You'll definitely be stuck in place, waiting for us to catch you. So it turns out, the prison operates on an immense magnetic field. Thanks to this iron shoe system, there are 3,000 convicts here, but only 30 guards. If the iron shoes leave the ground for 5 seconds, it will activate the alarm system. No one can escape. The men, strapping into the iron shoes, is ushered into the prison under the guard's watch. Every inmate here, due to the gravitational pull of the iron shoes, swaggers in an unstable motion, like penguins, only capable of making slight, measured steps forward. The prison's big thug, spotting the newcomer, decides to show him who's the boss. He strains to lift his iron-clad foot, landing a heavy kick to the man's waist, then pushes him onto a table. With a heavy punch to the head, he flips the men over onto the ground, inside the control room. The guards swiftly lock onto the brawler's iron shoes, but the warden commands, let them duke it out a bit longer. Truly a spectator who enjoys a fight, the man crouches, seeing his brother watching him. He knows he has to strike back, with an exhilarated smile. Just as the big thug charges at him, he launches a kick, striking right at the thug's heart. Doing his best to avoid using his feet, he attacks with fists and elbows, a left hook to one on his left, a right cross to another on his right. Followed by an elbow strike, he grabs a nearby dinner plate, smashing it onto the thug. The thug is slammed onto a table, immobilized. Overwhelmed with adrenaline, he shouts, kicking the thug's groin with steel-toed shoes. With a single blow, it's chaos below. He picks up the dinner plate, ready to finish off the big thug. Suddenly, the prison guard activates the man's steel shoes. The small light on the shoe turns red. A powerful force anchors them to the ground. He's rendered immobile. The captain swiftly uses a taser and the man falls backward. Shoes firmly in place, the fight is forcibly halted. However, the man isn't a ruthless criminal. He's the sheriff. The man is a sheriff. Six years ago, he was with his son, at a park, riding the carousel. Why did the actor change? We'll explain in a moment. Not far away. Someone with an scope on a sniper rifle, takes aim at the sheriff, pulls the trigger, and the bullet passes through the sheriff, striking his son's head. The sheriff crawls over, holding his son, crying in agony. He can't believe, his son is gone like that. Upon investigation, the sheriff discovers that, the notorious bomber, Cage, was behind the act. Cage has a peculiar fetish, he often disguises himself as a priest, blending into churches, and dances with a quirky head-bobbing move. He then takes the opportunity to touch women's hips, with an utterly entranced expression on his face. For many years, the sheriff of police has been chasing Cage, an informant reports, that Cage has been spotted at the Los Angeles airport. The sheriff heads there immediately. Elsewhere, Cage meets up with his brother, exiting the car with style. He reveals his golden twin guns, the Desert Eagle semi-automatic pistol. He changes into a $100,000 suit, preparing to board a private plane to leave Los Angeles. But as the plane begins its taxi, it's stopped by a fleet of police vehicles. The sheriff, a tough man, drives straight towards the plane, ready for a direct confrontation. At the critical moment of impact, Cage holds a gun to a stewardess's head. The sheriff makes a sharp turn, avoiding the plane, and spins 180 degrees on the spot. The ruthless Cage throws the stewardess down, then gives a defiant, what can you do about it, expression. Enraged, the sheriff commandeers a helicopter, pinning down the plane's wings, blasting the plane's engine. Cornered, Cage directs the plane towards a factory. Police quickly surround the location. Cage's brother, is also apprehended. Cage reloads, ready for a showdown with the sheriff. Guns blazing, he fires continuously. The sheriff, agile, dodges every shot, gets behind Cage, holding him at gunpoint. Cage tries to fire back, only to realize he's out of bullets. He goes for his knife, but the sheriff kicks it away and starts up the plane's engine. Cage is instantly blown away by the hot blast, slamming hard into barbed wire, ending up in a vegetative state. Meanwhile, the sheriff learns that Cage has planted a biochemical bomb in the city. If detonated, all of Los Angeles will be leveled. A colleague brings the sheriff to a research facility, suggesting he put on Cage's face and infiltrate the prison as Cage. His goal is to get the bomb's location from Cage's brother. 
Having studied Cage for years, the sheriff is the best fit to impersonate him. Thus, they begin the face swapping procedure. This is the most advanced face transplant surgery ever. Both men are wheeled into the operating room. First, the doctors mark the areas to be incised on the sheriff's face. Using computers, they calculate facial differences. Then start the laser incision, circling around the face, then lifting it with a face mask and preserving it in a special solution. Doctors meticulously trim and color his hair. Similarly, they remove Cage's face and place it onto the sheriff. A machine provides facial adjustment parameters. The doctors align and fine-tune the details. Under the effects of a special drug, the sheriff's face heals quickly to sound like Cage. A voice modulator is placed in his throat. By the end, the sheriff is indistinguishable from Cage. The sheriff is sent to prison, wearing 88-pound steel shoes, to quickly blend in. He picks a fight with the big thug, successfully making contact with Cage's brother. He learns the bomb is at the LA Convention Center. The sheriff immediately tries to notify his superiors, but the person who arrives isn't a superior. It's someone who looks exactly like him. What's going on? It turned out that just yesterday, Cage had awoken. He removed his bandages, touching his mangled face, in confusion. But when he saw the face swapping video, it all became clear. His own face was now on the sheriff. Staring at the screen, a daring thought crossed Cage's mind. He summoned one of his underlings. Had the surgeon who performed the operation brought to him, he demanded the sheriff's face. For himself, if he could become the police sheriff, he'd be invincible. After the surgery was completed, Cage eliminated the surgeon to leave no loose ends. Now, Cage had become the police sheriff, and the police sheriff had become Cage. Cage smugly visited the sheriff in prison, flashing the sheriff's wedding ring and saying, not bad. Everyone who knew about our face swap has been burned to death by me. Just stay put in here and be good. By the way, I'll take good care of your wife for you. I heard she's got a great figure. Trust me, I'll treat her right. The sheriff felt like he was on the verge of a breakdown. Cage got his younger brother out of jail and personally defused the bomb. Just like that, the infamous bomber transformed into a national hero, getting promotions and raises, reaching the peak of his career. While Cage reveled in the adoration of the masses outside, the sheriff remained incarcerated. While Cage ogled the sheriff's daughter's beautiful legs, the sheriff was still locked up. Even as Cage got intimate with the sheriff's wife, the sheriff was still in prison. Considering this, the sheriff decided he had to escape. A fellow inmate revealed that the only way to remove the iron shoes was during an electrocution in the execution chamber. Without hesitation, the sheriff threw a punch at a prison guard, intentionally causing trouble and was subsequently hauled to the electrocution room. As he sat in the electric chair, stripped of his iron shoes, seizing an unguarded moment, the sheriff broke free from the chair, snatched a pistol from a guard, and began to retaliate. He threw a bottle of sulfuric acid and shot it midair. Two prison guards were immediately engulfed in flames. Rushing to the control room, he shut off the alarms. The prison was now ablaze, and inmates seized the opportunity to rebel. Spotting his chance, the sheriff made a run for it, but upon pushing open the prison gates, he was met with despair. The prison was situated in the middle of the ocean. No. A helicopter approached, firing at him. Left with no choice, he leaped into the sea, determined. He swam all the way back to Los Angeles. Sheriff turns the tables, approaching one of Cage's henchmen, Baldwin. Without suspicion, Baldwin presents the Golden Twin Guns. Kept safe for you, now, they return to their rightful owner. Together, Sheriff and Baldwin hatch a plan to take down Cage. During this strategy discussion, a famous meme is born. Meanwhile, Cage hears of the sheriff's prison break. He orders a siege on his own house, where Sheriff learns of Cage's son. From his wife, the boy reminds the sheriff of his own deceased child. He holds the boy close, only to be interrupted by gunfire. To kill the sheriff, Cage disregards even his own allies. His men storm the house, surrounding everyone. Baldwin reacts swiftly grabs a gun from one of his fellows, and downs a cop, then dives into the fray. But Cage's wife isn't to be underestimated. She rises, gun blazing. A fierce gunfight ensues. After the intense shootout, both sides suffer massive losses. Suddenly, a gun is aimed at Cage's wife. Baldwin sees in time, shielding her. But the shooter, it's Cage. Madness. He even targets his own wife. In the end, only Cage and Sheriff remain, both aiming at a mirror. They fire simultaneously, but neither hits their mark. The sheriff seizes the opportunity to run to the rooftop. Unexpectedly, he encounters Cage's younger brother. With one kick, he sends him over the edge. Watching his brother die in front of him, 
Cage reaches the pinnacle of rage, the next day, the boss confronts him, asking why he acted on his own, without hesitation, Cage kills him, making it look like, a heart attack, the sheriff's wife furtively tests, Cage's blood, realizing the man before her is not her husband, the sheriff rushes to the hospital, gently caressing his wife's face, with a familiar gesture, the two finally recognize each other, the sheriff plans to take out Cage, during the boss's memorial service, with a flock of pigeons accompanying him, Cage makes his entrance, the two don't waste words, directly opening fire, after only a couple of shots, Cage has his men, bring in the sheriff's wife, but the sheriff is prepared, if you dare to take my wife hostage, then I have no choice but to bring yours too, the sheriff takes the first shot, crossing his hands, taking down two men next to him, to cover for the sheriff, Cage's wife falls, the sheriff's wife takes a stool, and hurls it at Cage, who turns and runs, the sheriff chases after him, and they end up in the yard, the sheriff's daughter sees her father being held hostage, grabs a handgun, and hits the sheriff in the shoulder, Cage seizes the opportunity to snatch the gun, and holds the sheriff's daughter by her neck, only then does the daughter realize that her dad is the bad guy, she pulls out a small knife, and drives it into Cage's thigh, Cage limps away, boarding a speedboat, the sheriff follows close behind, also chasing in a speedboat, neither is willing to back down, the sheriff fails to notice the speedboat ahead, and crashes directly into it, there's an instant explosion, in the midst of the flames, the sheriff's speedboat is severely damaged, in this critical moment, the sheriff leaps onto Cage's speedboat, Cage grabs an axe, and swings it at the sheriff, caught off guard, the sheriff, at the moment he's about to fall into the sea, clings to a metal chain, Cage throttles the speedboat to 100 miles per hour, the sheriff performs a water skiing maneuver, and, seizing an opportunity, climbs back on, during the brawl, the boat goes unmanned, veering straight for the dock, both men are flung by the massive impact, once ashore, the sheriff grabs a harpoon gun, piercing Cage's thigh with a shot, he's losing the fight, Cage, shockingly, starts cutting his face, taunting the sheriff, you'll never get your face back, infuriated, the sheriff, delivers a kick to Cage's groin, followed by another shot to Cage's waist, a criminal meets his end, later, surgeons perform a face transplant, and the sheriff gets his original face back, he also adopts Cage's son, from then on, the family of four lives a happy life, end of the movie, this movie is called, face slash off, question of the day, if you had the chance to swap faces once, whose face would you choose, drop your answers in the comments, if you enjoyed this, we recommend watching the original movie, that's all for today, remember to like and subscribe, see you next time, bye.